Greetings, silver screen suppers, clubbers. It is Gentlemen Prefer Blondes Month. What a spectacular movie. Don't be put off if you haven't seen it yet when I mention that it's a musical. There's only a few musical numbers in it and they are all fabulous. There's loads and loads of great dialogue. God bless Anita Luce. She wrote, I think it was originally a newspaper column and then a play and then a book. This fabulous copy was given to me by my friend Matthew Conium. And I'm actually going to start reading this because I think it's very, very funny. So I hope you enjoy the film if you haven't seen it yet. I am proposing with your screening, if you fancy a cocktail, that you have a Dorothy Shaw named after the Jane Russell character in the film. Uh, this is basically a variation on a cocktail called the Jane Russell and it was invented by the New York bartender Brian Miller and I'm simplifying it a bit so that it's a bit easier to make because not everybody has a vast amount of alcohol in their cocktail cabinets because his recipe uses two different types of rye it uses a Russell's Reserve rye for Jane Russell, obviously, and a Rittenhouse rye. Now, both of those are virtually impossible to get hold of here in the UK. So I am making a Dorothy Shaw, which is made with bourbon, which is much easier to get hold of here. You could use rye or bourbon, it's fine. I don't mind. <laughs> so I'm kicking off with two ounces of bourbon and lots of ice in my cocktail shaker. And to that, I'll be adding a quarter of an ounce of Benedictine. So hopefully you'll have this in your cocktail cabinet. If you haven't, you can go out and buy some and then you can use some of it in another fabulous cocktail, the Gertrude Neeson Buzz Balm. It is the kind of cocktail that you have to put on a silly voice when you say the name of it, the buzz bomb. Uh, I can put a link to that. So don't feel that you can only use this in the Dorothy Shaw. So a quarter of an ounce of Benedictine goes in next. And the next ingredient is a Grand Marnier. You could use Cointreau if you've got Cointreau. I mean, you don't have to go out and buy all these things, although they're just lovely things to have on hand, aren't they? So a quarter of an ounce of Grand Marnier, and then a quarter of an ounce of uh, sweet vermouth. So that's the red vermouth. This is quite a nice one, but you know, if you've got Cinzano uh, <laughs> vermouth, that's fine by me. I mean, Martini vermouth, yes, fine. Whatever vermouth you've got, bung some of that in. So the basic recipe then is two ounces of bourbon, quarter of an ounce of Benedictine, quarter of an ounce of Grand Marnier, and a quarter of an ounce of vermouth. So in the original um, Jane Russell, the bitters that are added are this particular bitters. Bitterman's, now, I have absolutely no idea how you pronounce this word. I'm sure many of you will know. I'm not even going to attempt it. But <laughs> basically, this is a really nice chocolatey bitters. I was lucky enough to get hold of this at my local booze emporium up the road here in Muswell Hill. When I went in and asked if they had it and they said, oh yes, it's over there on the shelf. They had a shelf and it had, honestly, there were hundreds of different types of bitters. I had no idea. If you only have Angostura around the place, you could use that instead. But this gives it a really nice chocolatey flavour. And my friend Orlando gave me this beautiful bitters bottle recently. So I'm going to use it for the very first time, adding my bitters to the Dorothy Shaw. Now, uh, in the original Jane Russell, it's just one dash of bitters, but I've been experimenting a bit. And I like a few more dashes because it gives it a really nice chocolatey flavour. So I'm going to put a few dashes. Oh, it works. Oh, that's good. Yeah, a few dashes of the uh, chocolatey bitters or Angostura. 
Or you could experiment with bitters. There's so many. I saw a truffle bitters. That'd be interesting. I have to invent a cocktail that's got truffle bitters in it. I think about that. Right, so shake it up. My ice has melted a bit, so it's not making a nice noise like it normally would. And then pour that into your cocktail glass. And that is garnished with an orange twist. So if you saw my um, Gloria Swanson video from last month, you'll see my little technique very thin piece of orange peel. Wind it around a knitting needle, which I always have around the place, being a knitter. <laughs> Could use a chopstick or a skewer or something like that. So you just wind it round and then when you pull it off, you've got a nice little uh, orange twist. So pop that on the edge of your glass and there you have your Dorothy Shaw. It's a lovely colour. So I'll have a little sip. Mmm. 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 That's very nice. It's very smooth flavours of the bourbon and the orangey Grand Marnier with a little bit of chocolate thrown in. A bit like a Terry's chocolate orange. Do you have those in the US and Australia and elsewhere? Oh, very much a traditional Christmas treat here in England, a Terry's chocolate orange. They are round like an orange and you bang on the top and they split out into little segments and delicious. So, Jane Russell, um, I'm hoping you're gonna have a go at her chili. It's a, it's a kind of fairly basic chili recipe, but it's good. There is another Jane Russell recipe that I'm going to recommend, which is in the Vincent Price book I wrote with my friend Peter. And if you have a copy of it, I highly recommend the Jane Russell recipe that's in here, which is for green pepper steak. It's a really nice recipe. And I love Ben Wickey's illustration of Jane Russell there. <laughs> it's just like, that to me is what she's like. She's sassy, she can be stroppy. I love her as an actress. She's a, she's a big broad, she's a big, you know, tough, tough woman. <laughs> her green pepper steak recipe is really good, so I recommend that. Uh, if you haven't got the book, I'll put a link so, to the recipe on the Silver Screen Suppers blog, but I highly recommend that. And when I was thinking about a canapé to propose for you, um, I remembered that also in the Vincent Price book, Jane Russell was in two films with Vincent Price. She may have been in more, I'm not sure. Uh, but the second one that's featured in the book is His Kind of Woman. His Kind of Woman with the divine Robert, Robert Mitchum. Hmm. Uh, I'm definitely going to do a Robert, <laughs> Robert Mitchum. Look at him. I'll do a Robert Mitchum recipe at some point for you all. But look, there's Jane looking super sassy at the top there. That's how I kind of picture her. Um, and in the, the Supper with the Stars book, the Robert Mitchum recipe is actually another chilli. And it's a bit more complex than Jane's chilli. So I, I recommend this chilli recipe as well. It's got... Um, bacon in it, beef obviously, uh, and it's got chocolate in it. So, you know, I know that is a kind of traditional thing in a lot of uh, Mexican chili, chocolate. So that's why I kind of think, well, oh, you could have the Dorothy Shaw with your chocolate bitters with, to, with Robert Mitchum's chili. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked, but, to go with the Robert Mitchum's chili, our other recipe that um, we recommended was Vincent Price's guacamole. Cause guacamole and chili, they are match made in heaven, aren't they? So I'm proposing that you make some lovely little canapes with Vincent Price avocado. Now, the Vincent Price guacamole recipe was in this book, which is called 
the White Elephant Celebrity Cookbook. The White Elephant was a very posh restaurant, well, restaurant here in London, and it was a favourite hangout of lots of stars. It was like one of those star spangled hangouts. And they did this cookbook in 1973, and it's really fun because they there are brilliant illustrations. Oh look, there we go, I've opened it, one of my favourites there. Diana Dawes holding a fruit cake. There's no recipe for fruit cake there. It's a lovely book. It's really nice. They've got lot, lots of famous illustrators uh, to do great illustrations of all the stars with food. There's Sean Connery. See that? It's a fun book. Anyway, Vincent Price and his guacamole. Um, we didn't know what, what avocados were here in England until the 70s. <laughs> I don't think I'd eaten an avocado until I was about 40 years old. I'm not joking. We just didn't, they weren't a thing here. We called them avocado pears to begin with. Uh, <laughs> and in the book, Vincent highlights this because he says, since the advent of the avocado into England, I have found rather limited use of this delicious fruit. Served mostly vinaigrette, or stuffed with prawns, etc. In California via Mexico, we use the riper avocados to make the all-purpose guacamole. Now, if you've never made guacamole, I heartily recommend it. It's much nicer than shop-bought guacamole, especially over here in England, which, you know, is just like a smooth paste <laughs> when you get it from the supermarket here. So uh, I highly recommend having a go at making it. It's so easy. Uh, Vincent's recipe, I shall read it to you, is two avocado pears, three tablespoons of lemon juice, a small grated onion. I always chop up my onion. I can never, I can't grate an onion, can you? It's not easy. So <laughs> I would say finely chopped onion, a small green chilli, chopped, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground coriander, a half a clove of mashed garlic, some salt, and here's the unusual element, three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Is that unusual? Is that unusual in guacamole? I don't know, but that's how Vincent makes it. And then a chopped seeded and peeled tomato and a dash of cayenne or Tabasco. So basically you peel your avocados, take the big pit out or seed, you might, you might call it wherever you are in the world. You mash it up until it's smooth or slightly lumpy. Vincent says he prefers lumpy, so do I. And then you add the rest of the ingredients, mix well and put the seeds on top. Now, this is his top tip. And since I saw this recipe, I always do the same. If you put the pit or the seed from the middle of the avocado in your avocado, it stops it going all brown. Yeah, it works. I tell you it works because I always do it now. And then he says chill, but remove the seeds a little bit before serving. Serve before dinner with drinks, crisps or biscuits. <laughs> there were no tortilla chips in England in the 70s, as far as I know, I could be wrong. <laughs> and by biscuits, he doesn't, well, I don't know if he means American biscuits or whether he means English type biscuits like digestives I don't know I don't know or I like this a great glop on top of shredded lettuce as a salad with dinner so yeah you could have this with salad alongside your Jane Russell chili or you could have tortilla chips to dip in it or you could make little canapes which I've done here <laughs> by putting a little bit of the guacamole on these little um bruschetta type toasty things that I bought from my local corn shop. I'll show you the packet in a minute. Yeah, I saw these and I thought, oh, they'll be really nice with a bit of guacamole on top. So that's what I've done. And I just sprinkled a little bit of chili on top. And I think that makes a really nice canapé to have with your Dorothy Shaw uh, before you have your chili. So I hope you will have a go at either the Dorothy Shaw or the 
or the Jane Russell, if you've got the wherewithal, if, you, if you've got Russell's Reserve Rye and Rittenhouse Rye, I'll put all the links to all the uh, recipes and things. And maybe you'll try the guacamole. It's, uh, it's a great film. I think it's really funny and I love, I do love Marilyn's performance in it. And I love Jane's performance too. She makes me laugh because she's so sassy. So I really hope you enjoy the film. Was there anything else I wanted to tell you? I'm sure there was, but I can't remember what. Oh yes, uh, if you want to dress up, then diamonds. I've got a few little sparkly diamonds here. Diamonds are good. Uh, and if you're having friends around, why not go to Claire's Accessories or whatever the cheap, whatever the American version of that kind of shop would be, cheapo, cheapo shop. And I'm oh getting a message up on my phone because I'm rambling on for too long. Uh, get yourself some cheap tiaras tiaras yeah they feature in the film and you everybody likes wearing a tiara i was at a bar last night in my, in my local tap room the local breweries that it's called the muswell hillbillies we were down there i never go out so it was quite rare to be partying in a bar and they had a tiara behind the bar and everyone was just having a go with it on everyone loves wearing a tiara so Get yourself some cheap ones, give them to your guests and have a fine old time watching Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Hope you enjoy the movie. Hope you enjoy the food if you have a go at it. I love seeing photos. Hashtag me uh, at Silver Screen Suppers. You know, all that social media stuff. You know, you know what to do. And uh, I'll see you in the chat. So cheers to you all and enjoy the movie and see you next time.